Okay, everyone, this podcast is sponsored by Relief Band. You know, Jess and I love keeping everything we need in like our little makeup bag or our purse, oil blotting papers, lipstick. You know what you need to put in there this summer? Relief Band. It's the number one FDA approved anti-nausea wristband. And it's been clinically proven, you know I love that, clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea associated with motion sickness, even anxiety, migraines. You know how sometimes that can give you nausea, Mm -hmm. hangovers, all of these things that sort of tend to happen when the heat turns up in the summer and you want to have some fun. Relief bands are essential, especially for kind of like, I'm going to say it again, a gal on the go. I take the ferry to the city. I take the bus. I'm in traffic all the time. And relief bands really work. Honestly, I didn't know how they worked for a while, but they work. In case it's not clear, it's like the name says, Relief Band is legitimately a band you wear on your wrist and it gives you relief from nausea and uses technology that works with your body. It's safe, drug-free, zero side effects. It's really simple. So if you want to make uncomfortable nausea moments a thing of the past, check out Relief Band. Right now, we have an exclusive offer just for Fat Mascara listeners. If you go to reliefband.com and use the promo code Fat Mascara, you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping. So head to Relief Band, R-E-L-I-E-F, B-A-N-D, reliefband.com, and use our promo code Fat Mascara for 20% off plus free shipping. We are so excited that this episode is brought to you by Kate Spade, New York. Are you ready for that summer state of mind? I'm currently in the summer state of mind and Kate Spade, New York is right there with me. You know, this year, 2023, is the brand's 30th anniversary and they're calling it their year of adventure. And the whole summer collection is based on the beach and it's fabulous. Jen, I almost freaked out when I saw that they were reissuing the Sam, the Sam bag, the Sam icon. That was their first ever bag that they launched back in 1993. And you're going to find this cute little iconic boxy tote in shimmery ocean hued sequins and more. You know that I'm a sucker for ocean hued sequins. They're also doing the crochet raffia, which is a new fabrication that just really feels summery. This bright colored raffia, it's woven into totes, crossbody bags, and more. There's also novelty seashell bags, starfish jewelry, and a new summery tweed take on the classic Katie bag. It's all like classics with a twist. So freaking cute. You can shop all of the Kate Spade New York summer collection at katespade.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Fat Mascara. Welcome everyone. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm Jess. Today is our big interview day, and we have a mega, mega guest. Wow, Jen. I mean, what a loss for me. <laughs> you go right in. Here's why it sucks for me that you weren't here for our Sophia Vergara. I know. No, I feel sad. I'm excited, but I'm like really sad. I was not here for this, but luckily, Jen had the most amazing chat with the Sophia Vergara hilarious, hilarious woman. Oh, she's so much fun. I mean, she's hysterical in Modern Family. Oh my God, we talked about that. 11 years she did that show. We'll get into that, but in case you don't know who Sofia Vergara is, she's an Emmy, Golden Globe, SAG-nominated actress, best known for, obviously, Gloria Delgado Pritchett. That was her, I forgot that was the character's full name. In the five-time Emmy award-winning comedy, Modern Family, she recently wrapped production as the title role and executive producer of Netflix's upcoming limited series, Griselda. That looks very fun. And she's also been an America's Got Talent judge. She's got that size-inclusive fashion line at Walmart. She's done fragrances. And she just launched a new brand called Toti, which we'll talk about, which is all about sun protection. Love that. And it has sunscreen, this two types of face makeup, a supplement with an ingredient I can actually get behind. Like, I did not get all science corner on her. I almost did because I like <laughs> I have seen the studies on this ingredient. Polypodium leucotomus. It's a fern extract. It actually has really good science. Yeah, don't worry. I'm saving that for this intro part of it because I didn't, like, ruin the rhythm of my interview with Sophia by, like, pulling out a white paper. That would have really been bad. That would have been classic amazing. Jen. No, that would have been we – got, we got to do something like that one day. She might have been into it. She loves science. Like, well, you'll see. What you'll if see. she pulled out a white paper? She's like, oh, no, 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 I would no, not no, have Jen. been surprised. I would not have been surprised. You, you'll see. You'll see. It's a great interview. Let's Let's get into it. Mm-hmm. 
I'm wearing your product today. I went with the CC cream, just so you know. I mean, it looks amazing, but I don't know if it's because it's... It's because of your product. I'm not blurred. This is my real face. Shade 2C. I... First, hello. Hi. Welcome what, to Fat what's, Mascara. What shade? 2C is a perfect match for me. I'm a 4N. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to talk all about your products and many other things. But first, welcome, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Good, thank you. I have to say, I know you're from Barranquilla, and like, I swear, there are so many people in the beauty and fashion industry from your hometown. Really? Tata Harper, Nina Garcia, people that have been on the yeah, show. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's going on down there? What's in the water? Is it like beauty and fashion is in the blood? Well, I feel like Latin women in general, we love beauty. We love being well put together. We've seen this from generations like your grandmother, your mother, they would like tell you always put your lipstick on or stuff like that. It's like, I think it's like a very cultural thing that women like feeling pretty and well put together. Did your grandmother tell you to put lipstick on? Oh, yeah, my mother, my grandmother, my (laughs) aunts. It's like, it was like, everybody, put your lipstick on. It's like, so I am obsessed with putting makeup on and lipstick on. (laughs) All right, if we go back in time then to little you with this whole family of women around you who are obsessed with beauty as well, do you remember the first beauty product that you ever used? Actually, yeah, it's funny. One of my aunts, she was the sister of my grandmother. She was married to a French man. And so she would travel a lot. She had a a different life than everybody else had because she was married to a French man. She had a half French baby and she would travel a lot to Paris. And she was my godmother too. So the first time I had like a really beautiful piece of makeup was a Chanel blush that she brought me for my birthday from Paris. And it lasted me like forever and ever because I would just use little by little. And I kept buying that color for like many, many, many years. I should go back to it, actually. (laughs) I haven't thought about that. (laughs) They still make it. You know how they do that. They always discontinue. I I know they make it. It's like it was like one one of their classic colors that I'm still on the market. She knew her stuff, giving you Chanel. Like, what age were you getting a Chanel blush? I was like, I want to say like 12. <laughs> okay. You went right into the good stuff right away. Oh, yeah. Was she, was she well, something no. you looked... Don't know. I, that's why I saved that Tell little me. Chanel thing forever. I, I didn't get into the good, good stuff until later, you know, <laughs> later. But like I started knowing about the difference and seeing how beautiful the packaging and falling in love with makeup from that one blush. Yeah. Now, was she somebody that you looked to for beauty advice or was there somebody else in your family or magazines? We all did look up to her. Also, her name was Sophia. So it was like the only person, the other person that I knew that had that name at the time. It was her and Sophia Lauren because Sophia wasn't a very popular name 50 years ago. And because she traveled, like I said, to France and all that, she was always into clothing and makeup and perfumes. And her house always smelled like a certain way, like her perfume. So I did look up to her. And also, I inherited my big boobs from her. She So I, I always was, I would relate to her a lot. <laughs> Wait, so her house smelled good too? Do you remember what perfume she wore? It was Shalimar. <gasps> my grandmother wore. It brings back such good memories. <laughs> and it's a big perfume. Yeah. And so that's why it smelled everywhere. It smelled like her. <laughs> yeah. So now, I mean, at age 12, you weren't doing like modeling or entertainment or anything then, were you? No, I started doing that like when I was 17. But at 12, no. And by then, did you have your beauty game down? Like models used to have to do their own makeup and stuff. Had you learned that stuff? Yeah. Also, for example, in Colombia, in Barranquilla, actually, We're very big on carnival. So we grow up doing our hair makeup really crazy for the four days of carnival. There's a lot of hype around it. It's a very important time where we prepare dances. We do different costumes. So we we grow up around art and makeup and hair and costumes. 
but that's very specific from Barranquilla. Yeah. Wait, can you dance? Are you a good dancer? Yeah. Amazing. I'm okay. from Barranquilla. Okay. My hips don't lie. <laughs> a, a fellow Barranquian, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't start being on camera until you were 17, but from then on, like, I've been watching you on film and movies for years. So you've sort of, like, grown up on camera. Has that affected the way you approach beauty? Like, you get to see yourself a lot more than most people did before we all had phones and everything. Well, yeah, of course. It, it makes you focus on it. Like, you know, you, you of course, you have to be in camera. You have to look great or you have to also feel great. And when I started mainly you would do it yourself. Like, for example, I work, my first big job in the United States was at Univision. I had a traveling show and it was a show that became very, very popular. But because it was traveling, I would have to do my own hair and makeup. So I was always looking to what was out there, what was people were using, what looked great on camera. Of course, you. It, I think it brings an awareness to beauty to be in the entertainment business before a normal girl. Yeah, because they always talk about now, like these teens growing up with social media, the pressure of seeing yourself. And I'm like, yeah, celebrities actually know that pressure better than anyone, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, yeah, I sometimes think about that. It's like now with social me media, it is, I mean, it is so great, though, because you're so informed. You see what's going on in the world of fashion, beauty, you know, health. I mean, it's it's an amazing tool. But I think sometimes it might be too much for young people to have so much information to for feel all, all like you're <laughs> missing so many things. You know, I used to, yeah. I used to have a, I, I love magazines and that's how I think I got a lot of the information from beauty. Like I would read every single article on beauty and health and diet and exercise and everything. And I had a traveling show, so I would buy on a plane ride in the airport all the magazines. So that's how I, that was like my social media. And you feel the pressure of, oh, I want to do that. I want to buy that. I mean, oh, I need that. I need to change that. You know, it's it's a lot. And that was just from magazines. I cannot even imagine now for young people to see it in, you know, in their hands 24 hours a day in person, people talking, people telling you. It's like, ah, oh, where do you start? Totally. Do you ever, I've never seen your travel show. I'm sorry. I've seen many other things you've been in. Do you ever go back and look at old film of yourself or is that like a dangerous thing to do? And no, I mean, I don't mind it. I mean, I see a lot of stuff because on social media, people post things oh, God, from the past. Yeah. Yeah. They do it. And things, I, there's a million things that come up on Instagram or in social media that I am like, huh? I, when was I there? Or <laughs> when I, I, there's a million of photo shoots that I look and I'm like, I mean, even if you kill me, I don't even remember where or when was that or for what it's really weird but it's like yeah I see a lot of the stuff that comes out on social media and sometimes it's like amazing sometimes it's like oh my god why was I wearing that why did people let me wear that I I, I ask not just because of beauty like regrets like okay we all maybe our brows were too skinny or whatever it was I don't know if you went through that phase no I, I didn't did I thing. never did my eyebrows actually. you were smart <laughs> you were smart but also because like as we age I don't know. You can compare what you look like on film now to what you looked then. Does it affect the way you feel about aging? Of course, it's horrible. I'm 51. Even, for example, I started Modern Family when I was, you know, it was 11 years. So sometimes if I'm watching Modern Family or something or they post something about episode, you know, season one and then season 10, I'm like, oh, what happened to me for God's sake? sake it's horrible like if you watch an episode from the first season from the last season it's like why <laughs> i didn't think of that because people binge now at the streamers you could watch 11 years of sofia Vergara. yeah you, you see to. me aging right in front of your eyes it's horrible <laughs> no it's it affects like i know like i'm getting older it affects you especially when you can see it on the camera do you feel that any pressure to like keep yourself looking exactly like you did at a certain age? Well, I do feel pressure. I mean, I, th I think it's not realistic to think that you can look exactly the same. That's not what I am going for. I think I'm going to go fighting. I mean, I think I'm going to. Yeah. I, 
I have friends. No, or, I'm not laughing because I'm right here with you. <laughs> I have their friends, my friends, some friends and cousins are like, oh, I know I'm not going to do that. I was like, oh, no, I'm done. It's like, oh, for what? It's like, I'm like, no. It's like, it's like, like I'm where do you try. draw the line? I'm yeah. not afraid of anything. Like, if you tell me you need to put cement under your eyes, it's like, oh, come give it to me. I'm like, I don't care. I'm ready for plastic surgery. I mean, I, I'll do everything. I mean, of course, without going crazy. And I think you have to be very careful and you have to be confident with what you have. But if you can, why not? You know, it's like if you're not hurting anyone else, do whatever you want. Yeah, like I feel like you kind of, you look at your peers. At least I look at my peers. I'm a beauty editor. We all have access to everything. So I'm like, okay, she looks good. I want to do that. Also, you do the bad one first so I can see what not to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am like, I'm always like when I go to parties or everything where I meet people, and I'm like, oh, I'm like finding out where did you go? And you have to. I mean, I guess also because I'm in this business and I'm 51, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, well, clearly, and you'll try so much. You have your own line, which I want to talk about. This is exciting. I have to say, now you have your own line. You could be the face of your lo- own line. But do you remember the first time you modeled for another product? Eh, well, yeah, I, w- I was in a Pepsi commercial when I was 17. Oh, you mean a beauty product? Well, that, I mean, that's a beauty product for me. I need the caffeine. But yes, yeah. I meant a beauty product. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so Pepsi was the first. But you have, you know, did you do other beauty lines? I know you were CoverGirl back in the day. Yeah, I did CoverGirl for a long time. I did Head and Shoulders for a long time. But those have been like, you know, in the past 12 years. I, when I was young, young, I think I didn't do as much beauty products, but I did more like clothing lines and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Well, so now you have your own. This is really exciting. And I love that you're focusing on skin protection. So I yeah. want to talk about, first up, can we talk about the name? I need like some background on this name. Toti. Am I saying it right? It's really hard right nowadays. I don't know if you know that to find To get names, a trademark. <laughs> to get <laughs> yes. a freaking trademark. And you end up getting these froopy, poory, you know, names that mean nothing because there's nothing. So I think everybody has to get creative and get these weird names. But I always want something more. I want something that is a little bit more meaningful, that has something to do with me or that reminds me of something or it has something to do with me. When we were looking for the name for this, it's like, you know, I have meetings and I ask people, my cousins, my friends, people that work with me, what do you think about this name? And I run it through everyone and everything. I couldn't come up with the name. And then I I don't know who it was. Somebody said, what about Toti? And I'm like, Toti? I'm like, but yeah, why not? And mainly because the whole story started of of me thinking about makeup starting when when everybody used to call me Toti. That's my nickname. But it's a nickname that I know that only the people from Barranquilla or from Colombia call me like that. Like I was telling a story this morning to someone that I was in New Jersey like three days ago and I was walking down the street and I heard a guy scream Toti. So... Immediately, I get paralyzed, and it, without turning around, I, I'm like, I know it's someone from Barranquilla. So, Toti was my name. In Colombia, everybody has nicknames. And yeah. my brother, who passed away, he was older than me two years, and he couldn't say Sophie when I was born, so he oh kept calling gosh, me Toti. So Toti, Toti, instead of Sophie, Toti. And so, everybody in Colombia calls me Toti. In my head, honestly, Maybe I didn't do my background research. I know it's a new line. I was like, it's totally, it's total protection. And she took out a couple letters. Oh my God. So you can use use that that. if you like. I'm going (laughs) to use that. (laughs) Because that's it. I was like, oh yeah, total inside, outside. I get it. (laughs) Wow. You are a genius. But let's talk about this inside, outside. By the way, so many people, like I get this question all the time. People are like, oh, my my makeup has SPF. So like, I'm fine. Right. And I saw your line and I was like, Sophia gets it. She gets it. It's not fine. You need more than that. So, like, why do a sun protection line? Why multiple ways? What were you thinking? It's it's been decades of me thinking about it. I had a traveling show in the 90s. Like I said, I did my own hair and makeup. I come from a tropical city. Barranquilla is by the Atlantic Ocean. It's sun. We were by the equator, so it's sun 
all year round. And there's not really much to do but to go to the beach. And so that's the plan. That's the weekend plan, to go to the beach. And if you're not in Barranquilla, you go to Cartagena, which is 45 minutes away, and it's on a boat, on the islands, and, you know, it's sun, sun, sun. And nobody really wore sunblock at that time growing up 50 years ago in, in Colombia. Actually, we did this horrible thing. Now I, now I think about it, and I'm like, Ugh. I mean, how am I not destroy? I don't understand. Because for us, for some time, we would do like a concoction of coconut oil that you you would buy in the streets, like in the at the beach, and you would put it all over you, and that's what you would tan with. It's like I think Americans used to do like baby oil or something like that, and so we would do coconut oil. It's like frying a chicken, and it was bad. So for a long time, I did that. Then I moved to Miami in the 90s where everybody was tanned too and fit and the models. And it was the 90s in Miami Beach, rollerblading. My son was a, a baby, you know, a kid. He was like four years old. So the plan was, let's go to the beach in Miami. I live by the beach. So it was also sun, sun. And then in one of these magazines that I read on a plane one day, it was like, they started talking about sunblock and sun damage. And, you know, it was little by little in the 90s that you started listening to that. And I was paying attention because I was, I've always been beauty obsessed and I love that. So I started listening to that and and I'm like, oh, I have to do something then. If, if, you know, I was in my 20s, so I was like, I wish that I had known that I needed to do it also in my neck and in my chest because they don't really match now. So for, you know, for more than a decade, I only did it in my face. I went to a drugstore and I would buy something and that that's all you had. And I always thought, I mean, how amazing would that be that it was makeup with some look because also I needed to be on camera. So I needed makeup. And I was usually outside because it was outdoors, the filming. So I was like, there was always something in my brain. Like there's something that needs, it's not, doesn't work. The sunblock, the white sunblock with the makeup, it was like a nightmare. Years passed. And in one of my trips to Spain, I found this product called HelioCare. And HelioCare, it was makeup, SPF, super high with tint. So I was like, oh my God, this is genius. This is, I need this in my life immediately. And I got obsessed. That's, that was all I used. I would bring it in my bag, like 10 of them. Every time I would go to Europe, if somebody would go to Europe, it's like, please, can you bring me some? I will pay you. And that was my thing. The Helio Care makeup with sunblock. And I loved it. And the the color was perfect for me. It was super easy. You reapply. And my my skin has always looked really good, like my face skin. Yeah. And then... <laughs> she wasn't putting the Helio Care on her neck. <laughs> yeah. I was like, one day I came to my manager, Luis, and I said, it's like, you know what? There's no product like this in the United States. Mm-hmm. I want to do something like this. This is what I use. And everybody would ask me, what are you using? So then I'm like, how do we do this? How do we create this product? We should copy this and do it in the United States. He's like, we don't have to copy it. Why don't I go? I contact Cantabria uh, Labs, which it says in the in the package, and we ask them if they want to go in business with us. And we create a brand of this product that you're dying for and that you can't live without. And so we started talking with them. They were amazing. We went to see their laboratories, it's spectacular in Spain. They place the laboratory on top of a source of water so that they can access the water to do the, their products, super clean water. I mean, it's it's beautiful. And so I went crazy and I'm like, yes, yes, I want to partner with them. I want to create Toti for the United States. We had to tweak some things because, of course, you know, FDA has different Sunscreen's hard. Oh, so many. We don't have the good ones here in the States, first of all. No, it's very old fashioned. You know, they don't want to 
We're a little bit behind. It's super weird. You would think, I don't think that they have updated anything like in 80 years or something super crazy. Oh, the U.S. government not updating things? That's weird to you. (laughs) It's like, it's kind of what you would think skincare wise (laughs) is like, we we need to be protected from cancer. It's like, do you want us to get cancers? Yeah, because you want to get a high SPF, because that's what I noticed too. This isn't like makeup that they throw in like a little 10, SPF 10. No. And you're like, I think, no. You've got, what is this one I'm wearing? It has SPF 50 plus. Yeah. Right. It is top of the top. I mean, you can't get better than that. It's like, I mean, I'm telling you, I wore this thing even before it was in my line. I have a house in the Bahamas and I I'm outside the whole time, and at night when I take my my makeup off, my my compact because this one is the one I use the most. Over when I'm over there because it has the the sponge, so it's like I carry it everywhere, and it's like everywhere. And yes, uh, the cream. I compact. take my makeup off. I take it off, and my face is completely a different color because than you my haven't body gotten any because, sun. That's good. Exactly. And so I know it works. Like after days and days in the sun, my face is absolutely like white and I love it. Well, that means it works. Can I ask you about this compact? Because when I put mine together, the scent of this is like a smoothie. I was like, this makes me want a fresh pressed juice. I don't know. Can you tell me what the scent it's is? It's so good. It's clean. It's like it's like green juice. I don't know. Great, what... I can't I mean I can't believe I can't believe this is my product. You're a little baby out it. in the it's world, like, right? I know because, I mean, it's so good. Like, it's beautiful. Like, it's perfect. Like, it's all you need. Like, I, I haven't even been using it to film. Is it better than the Helio Care? No, it's as good. As good, but lots of shades too, I guess. So that's good. But we have you more shades, did, which is better. That, I did notice that, which is um, you need to, obviously. Yeah. But you did also talk to me about the supplement because, first of all, how do you get in the habit of taking a supplement because I'm so bad about that. Like, what, what do you do to it's, help remind it's, yourself? It's hard, but, you know, what I think the the approach that I do is not to try to punish myself like, oh, you didn't take it, oh, you didn't take it today. You No, because there's supplements. So there's nothing wrong if you don't take them every single day. But if you take them the majority of days, it's like eating food. You don't have to eat every single vegetable, seed, everything, every day to have all your nutrients. So to me, that's the way I don't punish myself with it. Like if I put it in places where I'm going to have access to it in the morning or when I'm eating or in my trailer Mm -hmm. or in my car. And so it's not like a punishment. And then you do it even more. You'll see. Because sometimes when you feel like, oh, I haven't been taken in a week, then you're like, oh, why even take it now? No, just take it when you can. And it's great. The the supplement we have, it's amazing because it works with helping you because, you know, the whole line is about protecting, about correcting, about helping you with sun damage. And which is happening to us every single day because we drive, we're outside, we're inside places with light. So if you work from the inside, it's amazing. And Cantabria Labs figure out that there is this product that can actually help you as, of course, it's not like you take that and then you don't need to put sunblock now. Okay. I have to tell you, I'm a bit of a science nerd. So like back in the day, I remember the study about polypodium, this like weird fern, like one of the few ingredients that helps boost sun protection as taken as a supplement. And I was like, why don't more people know about this? And then I looked on the ingredients of your supplement and it's one of the ingredients. So I can vouch guys. I did the science background on that one. That's like a known boost of antioxidant production for your skin, not just your whole body. Yeah. That's and great. Cantaria Labs have been investigated for like 25 years, you know, or like more, like 50 years, something like that. Oh, they did the supplements that made it the HelioCare pills, right? It's the yeah. same lab. Of course it is. Yeah. You got the good stuff, Sophia. No, it's scientifically proven. I'm like, I didn't want it to do, listen, when I got this idea of of doing this makeup and sunblock at the same time, there was no one in the market that had it. Mm. I, it took me too long because I've been busy, being famous and all that stuff. <laughs> and I kind of like, I regret a little bit that I got a little bit behind with my idea that I wanted to do. And now the market, there are a lot more of products that have sunblock and 
stint. But six years ago, it wasn't like that. It wasn't. Yeah. There wasn't as much. But this is different. This is hardcore sunblock with the color. And it looks beautiful. It's perfect. It has coverage. It's not. It doesn't look like you're putting sunblock. You know, it looks like you're doing makeup. And so it was like... It's been it's it's been amazing. It's like it's like I can't believe it's out now because it's been a lot of work and I feel there is a difference about this product than all of them that are in the market right now. So, you've been using this for years. I assume you've not been sunburned in a long time because you know about sun protection now, right? Yeah, no. I mean, I have been a little sunburn a little bit here like the if shoulders. you're in a boat or something and then you forget, but in my, in my face, mm -mm, no. And you told me you're like a f level four. You have, you have a naturally blonde, right? You have a fair, like a fair complexion. Yeah. yeah. I have fair complexion and I'm very yeah. yellow, yellow skin. Like, like I tan, like if I go in the sun, I tan, but I, I mean, I only, like I used to be in the sun. Now I don't like now it's two times a year when I go on vacation, you know, a little bit. But my, my face is always protected. And if I have to work, um, be it an event or an award show, I use self-tanners in my body so that I don't have to tan, tan. Do you have a favorite self-tanner? I can never find one I like. They all smell funny. You know what? I Like everything in my product life, I've tried everything. And I have changed. I mean, I've been using self-tanners for a long time because I have been conscious about the sun for decades. And before they were super orange, I've gone through all of them, Saint Tropez, I mean, you name it. And lately, in the past, like, three years, I've been using one that it's really good for my skin color. It's called Mind Tan. Am I going to smell like burnt burnt toast? Yeah, but like, I'm so used to it. Like, you know, and I, <laughs> I, I, I think of it as... Part of my work, if I have to be on a dress like this, this is and the scent you don't of money. Tan. This is me looking the part, <laughs> getting yes. the job done. I'm impressed. I should think of that next time I use it. Exactly. You have to think about it like that way because, of course, nobody wants to. I mean, my husband hates it, but he doesn't say that anymore. I wasn't going to say, but that's the thing. If you go, if you're in bed with someone and you've self tanned, they're like, "What's that smell?" I'm like, "That's why I look cute." So deal with it. Yeah. I mean, I, it is what it is. Just, you have to do it. I mean, if it's for your job and for your beauty, just do it. Okay, everyone, summer is such a busy time, especially if you're trying to stay fit. But Aloe Moves has us covered here at Fat Mascara. I don't have to go anywhere with Aloe Moves because it's a streaming on-demand wellness platform with yoga practice, fitness routines, all of that. You can fit it in your schedule. You can pop it on your computer, do it anytime. And it's not just workouts. They also have gua sha, facial fitness, how to do face yoga, how to do dry brushing. Jess, what classes have you been taking from Ella Moves? I take, honestly, anything that's 20 minutes or less. Anything I can just stop <laughs> in the middle of the day and be like, all right, I'm going to do this. It's 20 minutes. You know, you spend 20 minutes like going to the bathroom and getting a snack. In that time, you could have done a restorative yoga practice, a desk stretch, a back opener. You could have meditated. And all of this, I do in like just sweatpants and a top that's not even like exercise top sometimes. Just easy. No equipment. In the comfort of your own home. And best of all, we have such a good deal for you. Our sponsor is so generous. This is amazing. Listen to this. This summer, make time for your wellness goals with Allo Moves. For a limited time, Allo Moves is offering you, our listeners, a free 30-day trial. Plus, get this, 50% off the annual membership. But you can only get it by going to allomoves.com. A-L-O- M-O-V-E-S dot com, allomoves dot com, and use the code MASCARA, all caps. You're going to get a free 30-day trial, then 50% off an annual membership. Again, it's allomoves dot com. The code is MASCARA in all caps. You get a free 30-day trial, 50% off your annual membership, allomoves dot com, code MASCARA. You got to do it right now. You're obviously into the beauty treatments. You grew up with beauty and everything and skincare. Can we talk about some other aspects of beauty, like manicures, makeup, hair? Is that fun for you? Do you enjoy the process of getting done? 
hate it. I don't understand why girls love doing their nails or their hair. To me, that's a torture. It's like maybe it's because I've been working in the entertainment business when I have every freaking day for months and years, people on top of me doing my hair and my makeup, that that's like the least thing I want to do in my off days. So I hate it. Like for a long time, I use, I can do my nails on my own so that I don't have to sit there for two hours. I hate it. But I usually, for work and they need to be perfect, I'll do my nails. But it's not like my, oh, let's go do our nails. No. Mm -mm. I hate What about like massages or, I don't know, face acupuncture? Do you enjoy any of these kind of treatments? For example, massages, I just do them for like lymphatic. I like lymphatic massages where supposedly they help you drain uh, toxins and all of that. I, I am a person that doesn't sweat that much or that easily, and that's really bad to keep all the all your toxins. So if I'm going to get a massage, if I have the time to book a massage, I'm not going to do a relaxation massage. I do a lymphatic <laughs> massage. Have you ever get down the table and they just start, like, they're, like, barely petting you, and you're like, no. I want my money's worth. <laughs> get in no, there, I usually right? like know where I'm going and lymphatic massages. Now they're getting famous in the United States, but for a long time, nobody knew what it was. So only like in Miami because there are Brazilians and Colombians and Venezuelans. But it was very hard for me to find a good lymphatic massage in Los Angeles. And now the past like two years, they have become a thing. So thank God for that. Are there any treatments that are non-negotiable for you? Like even during the pandemic, you were like, I'm going to find a way to get X done. Or could you go bare and you'd be happy? No, actually, during the pandemic, I ha- I am lucky that I'm 51 and I barely, like now this year, I started seeing a couple of white hairs the- here and there. So I'm lucky be- that w- because I can stay without doing my hair color for like six, seven, eight months and no problem. Like, you because you are it- lucky. I know. It's like I... I can't believe it because more, some of my f- friends, they have had white hair since their 20s. So I kind of like during the pandemic, I didn't do my hair color and it was nobody was noticing. I was doing a lot of working a lot on Zooms, but it was fine. I d- actually, I didn't do any facials, nails. I mean, unless it was something like for work, I was really, I, I was very good trying not to <laughs> to get the virus. <laughs> Well, sure. And all right, so you can handle a natural look if need be. I like that. I also yeah. know you're very into fragrance because you have your own fragrances. Do you still wear your own fragrances? Yeah, all the time. And it's nothing better than people asking you, what are you wearing? And you're like, yeah, it's mine. <laughs> I would be very selfish. If I got famous, I think that I would do fragrance first just because I. then you get like a bespoke scent for you that you wanted anyway, yeah. right? It's amazing. Yeah, I love it. It was one of the most fun things and you get to pick what you want. Do you mix it up or you have a couple, right? Which one's like your signature? Or do you mix, you wardrobe them? I like changing. I don't, I'm not like I have to smell one smell like the rest of my life. No, because I hate that then I stop smelling it. I want to smell it. It's like that happens like after a while. I'm like, I'm not smelling anything. I do. I even put perfume on. I hate that. So I change so I can smell it. But it, but it's, I mean, I think perfume is one of the, the things that everybody should always wear, you know, because it's, it gives you a little oomph once you put it on. And it's so nice to come close to a person and smell something nice. I, I love that. I think it's something really nice that everyone can do for themselves to put a little bit of perfume unless you have crazy allergies then don't <laughs> what about your house are you like what are you into a home fragrance because at fat mascara we are obsessed with a candle obsessed with a diffuser what do you do in your house i'm obsessed with everything yeah <laughs> what does it smell like it's like everything i have like right now i'm really obsessing with it's called soho home It's like the line from the Soho house that they have a line of candles and diffusers. So we just moved into a new house and everywhere, every corner has a fucking thing. I mean, it's like I love it. And then you feel like I live in a hotel, which is the dream. Candles, the diffusers. I mean, it's so much fun. I like, I mean, I don't know. I like everything nice. (laughs) 
What and some other beauty products that you're into? Like obviously we're wearing our toti all the time now. All the time now, yeah. I wear it actually even at night, which I thought always I'm not gonna wear stuff with some luck at night to go out at oh, night. Oh, not to sleep, but like if no, you're no, not evening to sleep. Makeup. No. <laughs> No, I'm not that I was like, I feel like this is beauty 101 to wash your face before bed. You should know this. (laughs) No, but I I use it to go out at night now because I actually always thought, okay, if you some luck, you don't need it at night to go out. Just clean your face and start over with foundation or with powder, whatever you're going to do. And now I like how my skin looks with it. So I put it on even to put my you know, date night outfit, whatever I put it on. And I I have it on right now. I like, for example, and I also figured out recently, actually I was doing a shoot and and I I was like, always like, is it going to look good on camera and this and that? And because I wanted to use the product because I'm talking about the product. I don't want to be lying and saying I'm not using the product when I am. I am using the product when I'm not. And for some reason, I don't know, it hit me. I put this one on first the CC cream. Yeah. I put it all over and then I put this one on top. And I was like, oh. this does not give us SPF 100 people, by the way. That's not how it works. But yes, you do the but cream. It, but it gives you dewy skin. Oh, you look dewy. I didn't try that one yet. I'm going to try that. I like a little gleam. Yeah, I love that. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. So now I've been doing this to film. <laughs> mm-hmm. And at night... I love it. But you were asking me about beauty products. No, I mean, I, I love every, I think I've tried every beauty product in the world. What lip are you giving me today? It's very pretty. Do you know? This, you know what? I got it on Amazon, I think. It was just like a lip liner that I saw and I ordered it. And it, this is the first time I wear it. I don't even know Wait, the name. you shop on okay. Amazon? Sometimes. I can picture your Amazon delivery person seeing the name and being like, Sofia Vergara. That can't be. <laughs> Like you must use a I fake buy name everywhere where I can find some <laughs> things that can arrive very fast. That's true. That's true. I, I don't know why I think about these things. Celebrities, they're just like us. Of course you shop on Amazon. Okay, so you got an Amazon yeah. lip on. What about brows? Like you have great brows always. Do, is there color in there? Yeah, I've always, one of my favorite things that I've always had has been my my eyebrows. I've never really messed with them, like plug them, nothing. I, I like the look of thicker eyebrows. I have half of the eyebrows now that I used to have when I was uh, young. So now I do feel them a little bit here at the end with Anastasia's uh, pencil. And she has like an amazing line of makeup and lipsticks. Usually I have her lip liners on. I love them. And definitely she's the queen of eyebrows. They make a good pencil, they do. Any other beauty products before? I have a little speed round of questions for you. I have rosacea, so I can't wear uh, like really thick, thick creams or moisturizers. So I'm really into serums. I mix them like anti-aging serums and collagen serums. I don't even know what I'm doing, but I, I can get away with putting a lot of serums on so that I don't have to use a thick cream because for some reason, when it's too moist, it makes my rosacea like flare up. Dr. Nigma Talib has a really nice line of face serums, number one, and I don't know what the name of the other. And she makes me mix them together, which I love, and I put them all over my face. I mean, if I could look like her, sure, I'll use the serum. I know, she looks great. She, she's gorgeous. Okay, so let's do our little, our speed round here at the end. Just the first thing that comes to mind, first question, you're the host of America's Got Talent. What talent do you wish you had? You have a lot of talents, but what, what one are you missing? I would love to dance, like, you know, like really dance. Okay, what's your pet peeve? Could be anything. Beauty thing, life thing. You can't tell me traffic because everybody from L.A. says traffic, so you can't say that. Well, you can. I can't give you rules. Oh, bad coffee. <gasps> That's a good one. When it's like a water, it's like, thanks for the brown water. I'll throw it, I'll throw it in your face if you give me like something really bad. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do next time I get bad coffee. It's so disappointing too. And all you want is the, the rich hit of flavor and they give you like brown water. I'm, that's my new answer. That's a good answer. Okay. If you had to quit the entertainment business tomorrow and take a job in the beauty or like health industry, what would you do? I would be a doctor. 
You did study dentistry, didn't you? Yeah, but I went to study dentistry because I really wanted to be a doctor. But at that time, women were not doctors in Colombia. Mm. And But I am a frustrated doctor. I love everything that has to do with the human body, medicine, science. I read every single article. I, I mean, my husband gets so annoyed because sometimes like it's three in the morning, I can't sleep. And I'm like, what are you watching? Let me see. And I'm just watching like a prostate prostate operation, prostate removal. It's like, for what? what? It's like, what are you going to do with all that? Maybe someday I'd need to do one. Come on. <laughs> it's like, you'll see. You'll see when you're 70 years old. You'll be thanking me for watching this video. I'm going to tell you all about it, what you have to do step by step. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if we're on a desert island and you need prostate surgery, I'll be able to do it for you. Great skill to have. Great skill to have. <laughs> Everything and all my girlfriends, they everyone that I know calls me every time that they have like a medical issue. Oh, they yeah. tell me what doctor, what doctor I need to call. What what do you think that is? So I am the first stop. The insurance should be paying me because I am the ones who sell them. You have to call your gastroenterologist. You have to call your internist, or this is a cardiac uh, you, problem. You do referrals. You do referrals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You should be getting a cut. Okay, what's your favorite indulgent snack? Cake. That's very general. Can you be more specific? Mm, like a pound cake. Oh, okay. No, pound cakes, I love, you know, the vanilla, the classic pound cake. I love yeah. it. Homemade, preferably. Very nice. Okay, last question. What do you need to get good beauty sleep? What do you need to, to sleep well? I mean, now a lot of things, because I'm 51, so that starts happening when you're start to be premenopause and all that, you know, your sleeping habits start changing. When I'm f traveling, I do take something, but when I'm at home, I try to do it naturally or with some kind of, there's these little Colombian drops that they're supposed to relax you. I don't know if psychological or not. So I take the little drops, but I get really jealous. My husband, he just like, he's talking to me and suddenly I turn around and he's gone. Me, I have to like lay in the bed and read things and then finally Watch go to prostate sleep. surgery. Yeah. A couple of Take surgeries. A yeah. couple of <laughs> procedures. Yeah. That'll put anyone to bed. Well, I'm glad you eventually do get to sleep. That's great. And I'm so glad you were able to come on Fat Mascara and share Toti with us and your story. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope that you love the product. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product review or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. 